So macrophages are key effectors of the innate immune system, and basically they can recognize what are called eat me signals and actually eat or phagocytose cells, and this is very relevant in cancer cells. They also play additional roles in activating adaptive immunity. Importantly, CD47 is the predominant negative um, inhibitory checkpoint that can basically inhibit macrophages from phagocytosing the cancer cells. And the concept is important because CD47 is significantly increased on AML cells and has been associated with inferior overall survival. And so 5F9 is a first-in-class uh, IgG4 antibody that inhibits the interaction of CD47 on the cancer cells with SERP alpha on macrophages. And one of the benefits of this is that really cancer cells are largely the only cell that expresses these eat me signals. There are an exception of old red blood cells, which I'll comment on in a moment. But basically this allows for really selective cytotoxicity against cancer cells and sparing normal cells. Additionally, preclinical models show that azacitidine can increase these eat me signals. In an aggressive xenograft model, the combination was shown to improve survival versus either uh, 5F9 alone or azacitidine. And so that led us to our phase 1B trial, both looking at 5F9 alone as well in combination with azacitidine. This was for elderly AML patients or ineligible for induction chemotherapy, as well as high risk MDS patients as defined by the IPS. SR. So importantly in, for safety, the drugs have been, uh, 5F9 has been very well tolerated. There are mild gastrointestinal side effects such as nausea, and importantly there is a anemia side effect. So what we do is we give a priming dose of 5F9 at one milligram per kilo. This is to sort of clear these old red blood cells and we can see on average a hemoglobin drop of a half a gram per deciliter, but over time the uh, hemoglobins um, are typically back to their baseline by the end of cycle one and improve over time with response. Response. We really do not see any unique side effects, and if we look at azacitidine expected adverse event profile, it really looks very similar to monotherapy. Out of all patients to date, we've only had one severe adverse reaction, which was an infusion-related reaction on the first infusion, um, and that is the only patient to, date dis patient to date discontinued from an adverse event. When we look at efficacy, we did have one objective responder out of 10 patients in relapse refractory AML, but more excitingly, in combination cohorts, over 60% of patients of AML responded and 100% of patients with MDS responded. And this includes a complete remission rate in both cohorts of over 50%. I think importantly, we know that hematologic improvement for both of these groups is very important. And nine out of 11 of our MDS patients had hematologic improvement by IWG criteria, and about two thirds of patients became transfusion independent in the AML cohort. We also see deep responses. We can see uh, complete cytogenetic responses and achievement of MRD negativity in both groups. And uh, correlative data can support clonal clearance you know, over time. So I think in conclusion, the combination therapy has both been safe and very well tolerated and the data support uh, expansion cohorts in both indications.